Good morning. There's a little skies here. So glad that you can join me today and keep me company. Just wanted to give you a look and see what I found in the garden this morning. There is a dragonfly right there. And those are good to keep in your garden. They eat some of the bad pests. So I welcome those with a fountain. They say that they're attracted to water. So I usually try to keep my fountain going or if the fountain is not running, I'll go ahead and just leave a pool of water in the bird bath. And they seem to get attracted by them. I don't want to scare him away. And the sun is actually in the direction that I want to show you a few things. So we'll see if it moves a little bit. But I did want to tell you that last night was our harvest moon. Now for the Northern Hemisphere, we get our harvest moon October 1st or 2nd. And for us, it was October 1st last night. The Southern Hemisphere is usually always get it in March or April. In Harvest Moon is just a name. In some ways, it's like any other full moon name. But these autumn full moons do have special characteristics related to the time of moonrise. Nature is particularly cooperative in giving us full looking moons near the horizon after sunset for several evenings in a row. Around the time of Harvest Moon, it usually helps us out because in the old days, before there were tractor lights, um, and I looked it up, it was before 1939, the lamp of the harvest moon or the harvest moon itself, they help farmers to gather their crops despite the diminishing daylight hours. As you know, we're probably gonna start getting our hour change. And so as the sun's light faded into the west, the moon would soon rise in the east to illuminate the fields throughout the night. Now this information, I did get it from an article I found online because I wondered, well, what is the harvest moon? And that's what it is. It's, it's entitled, All You Need to Know 2020's Harvest Moon, and it's by uh, Dave, Deborah Bird, posted by Deborah Bird. And that's as of sep 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 excuse me, September 20th, uh, September of 2020 of this year. I was just worried to scare away the dragonfly, but he's not moving. It looks like he's still there. And again, I'm sorry about the sun right there in the middle, but I did want to show you something you want to come out early in the morning to pollinate your flowers um, sometimes you may not have enough bees in your area or uh, you want to make sure that you do get a pollination going so you're going to look for the male flower and we have one right there if you can see it this is my paintbrush you can use a q-tip or a paintbrush just make sure it's clean so the way you can tell that this is a male flower is he doesn't have a fruit underneath. I call it a fruit. Some people call it an ovary. Uh, I'm not too keen on the plant parts. I am thinking the inside is referred to as the, what was it called? I think stamen. And the inside of the female is the stigma. But we'll just call it the male flower and the female flower. This one I pollinated on Monday and I can show a before and after picture. She has grown, and those are some of the ways that you know that the pollination took. This flower starts dying off a bit. It doesn't fall off too quickly either. So I pollinated her on Monday, and maybe some bees did the work before me as well. But I know I went in there on Monday, today's Friday. So she's looking a lot bigger. She actually doubled in size, which is crazy. And that one I pollinated as well. And I used this flower yesterday. She doesn't seem, he doesn't seem to have too much pollen, but what we're gonna do, sorry about the focus there. Let me zoom out a bit. We're gonna get in there. And grab some of that pollen. And usually you do have, you're gonna see a whole bunch of male flowers. You're gonna usually see a ratio, ratio of nine to one. And that's because nature wants to ensure that there is pollination. So, and you usually do see the male flowers coming up first. And once you see about five, six, seven, start keeping your eyes peeled for, for that female flower with the, with the fruit on the end, on the bottom of her. You can see a little bit. I use this, I used this flower on yes, yesterday. But let me go ahead and clear that up for you. 
You can see a little bit of pollen at the end. There you go. See that pollen right there? It's very, very little, got the little yellow stuff. Okay, I just wanted the airplane to pass. So I'm not too worried about pollinating this one because I did pollinate her a little bit yesterday. But I'll go ahead and show you what I did. Her flowers, her petals were a bit more open yesterday. Pardon, let's see here. Let's see, go ahead and see if I can get in there. And what you're gonna wanna do is just get your brush or your Q-tip and put it on in there and make sure you get it on the stamen and just rub it around. And you can kind of tell that she's been pollinated because she starts turning uh, a little brownish in there. And when you first see her, she's a real light yellow. But that's what that's another telltale sign that, that, that she's been pollinated. Sorry, I'm trying to do this with two hands to make sure that I can see the viewfinder. So you see she's a little brown in there. She's browning up. That's usually a sign that she's pollinated. So I'm just going to close her back up. And... We can check on her growth later on in the week. That's what she looks like. While you're doing this, you also wanna check for aphids because they just suck the life out of your fruit. I, I know they're vegetables and stuff, but I just always call them fruit or babies because in a lot of the new growth, they love new growth. So like, we're gonna check for aphids. I know I saw a few earlier. Let's see if I can find any. Here is one aphid. I don't know if you can see it. The tip of my brush. Let me make sure I'm in clear. And zoom in right there. You can barely see him. I've been doing a lot of aphid control. Right there. I'm wondering if I put my paintbrush there, it'll get it out of focus. Well, anyway, he's right there. So you always want to keep a little bit of neem oil on hand and I wish I had a better, I wish I do and I don't because you don't want a whole lot of aphids, but I did have aphid infestation earlier this week. So I pretty much cleared them out. But when I do get a better infestation, I'll go ahead and show them to you. You want to take a look underneath your leaves as well while you're out here just to see if you have any squash bug eggs or things that look bad. See right there, I think we have an aphid, but I think he'd be dead. Let's see if he's dead. Yeah, he's dead. But, okay. Oh, that's alive. Okay, so I'm gonna come back and spray those. But while you're here, you always wanna just check under the leaves, around the leaves, see if you have anything going on, anything weird or different that you need to go ahead and do prevention for. Now, you're not always gonna keep all bugs out especially if you're doing organic but that's why it's called pest control you're not going to obliterate them but you just want to keep them at bay so that nature can work together and you can work with nature and you know it makes the plant stronger in some cases but you just don't want to let it get out of hand because if not it will just start, start sucking the life out of your plants but going back to the pollination you want to go ahead and see here's another male flower that one closed up already and the way you can tell again, he doesn't have a fruit underneath. He doesn't have a baby, like just like that one. And here is a female coming up right there. There's the ovary and there's a female, there's the baby. And here's a male. They'll probably open up in the next couple of days. But I have pollinated that one. Sorry, the sun's right there in the way. And that one, so we're waiting on those. And this one, I pollinated her, actually all four of these this week. She's gaining weight nicely. And this one, we'll check up on her again. And usually you can see a lot of growth within four days. So today's Friday, we'll check on her next week. And let me just use this so we can get a gauge as to how big she's growing. And we have some more babies coming out right here. And here, <laughs> I heard, now I don't know how true this is, but the, if the vines, you keep them horizontal, just like the way they're meant to be on the ground. This is a spaghetti squash, by the way. If you keep them horizontal, and it's hard because they have a mind of their own, but you start seeing a lot more females coming up. Because if you look down in here, you don't see 
that many females. Well, we see one right there. Way over there. Sorry, I'm trying to battle the sunlight and try to keep you in focus. Hopefully this will come out enough to where you can understand. But yeah, you see a whole lot of them. A whole lot of females running across with the horizontal lines. So I hope that makes sense. You just want to come out here. Some of the problems that you might have if they don't pollinate, uh, which I did have three weeks ago, the pollination I thought went well. However, it rained a lot. The rain will wash it away. And you can tell that she wasn't pollinated well or is not gonna do good. Uh, she'll just die off and fall off within a few days, literally three days. That's what happened to mine. Um, what I did with one of them, I put a plastic baggie over her head or her flower and her, and her ovary to try to keep her from the rain, but I think I was too late. And I think the rain and the wind banged her around a lot and she fell off. But I tried the plastic baggie to cover her up to retain the pollen, but that didn't seem to work. But so another reason where your pollination may not work for you would be the lack of calcium or uneven watering. So what you're gonna wanna do and what I did since there wasn't pollination. I noticed some babies were just dying off and there were, the tips were turning brown. So something like this one right here, she was turning brown. And that's a sign right there that's like a blossom end rot or that she doesn't have enough calcium. So what I did is I just did a real quick slurry with calcium. I did, I used garden lime, organic garden lime, two handfuls and a couple of tablespoons of distilled white vinegar, mixed up a little slurry, then added that to a gallon of water. And from that gallon of water, I just grabbed like uh, two 16 ounce cups and watered her in. And I did that one week and then I waited five days and then I followed up and I did it again. I put another couple of cups in there of that calcium slurry and it seems to be working because her fruits are not falling off so far. They've been holding. So I think that's what she needed. It was a combination of things. She needed some calcium and it was just too much rain. So the pollination wasn't going through. So hopefully this helped you. If you have any questions about pollination, just let me know. And again, sorry about the sunlight and trying to get that focused in trying to work with a new tripod here alrighty well if you have any questions less just let me know thanks so much for keeping me company today have a wonderful day see you soon